A relay is an electrical device that is designed to interpret input signals in order to generate or abruptly eliminate the contact between two conductors in an electrical circuit. In other words, it's an electrically operated switch which also has the great advantage of electrically separating the controller circuit from the circuit being controlled. Because of these characteristics of such a basic level, relays are used in a wide range of applications, including motors, compressors, heaters and PLCs or programmable logic controllers, being the latter used in most industrial processes. In fact, every time one of your appliances makes this sound, it is highly likely that it is a relay that is being activated. Because of this, in this video we will talk about their relevance, how they work and what their limitations are. First we need to understand why it is important to electrically separate the controller circuit from the one being controlled. Suppose we have a battery-powered circuit in which a sensor activates an LED every time it detects an object. This may be useful up to a point, but it is highly likely that we will want to perform some other action when an object is detected. For example, we could use this same circuit to activate a conveyor belt instead of just turning on an LED. In this case, one might think that it is just a matter of changing the wires that previously powered the LED and connecting them to a motor. However, if we did this, nothing would happen. The circuit would be able to detect the object and would send an electric current to the motor but it would be so small that it would not have the power to move it. Alternatively we could think of feeding the whole circuit with a higher current and voltages capable of running the motor, but that would create other problems. The control circuit components would burn out instantly as they are only capable of withstanding very low voltages. And even if they could withstand it, the control circuit that worked with direct current provided by the battery we would be feeding it with alternating current and it would not work properly either, unless we integrated other components. Fortunately, the relay allows us to solve all these problems easily. The signal that previously lit the LED will now be responsible for activating or deactivating the relay, that is, opening or closing the passage of electricity through the circuit that feeds the motor, all without both circuits coming into contact. There are several types of relays, but to understand how they work, we will focus on one of the most used, electromagnetic or electromechanical relays. These are mainly composed of three elements, an electromagnet, a moving armature and a series of contacts. If we focus on the electromagnet, it will be connected to the controller circuit and, as its name indicates, when an electric current passes through it, a magnetic field will be formed, behaving similarly to a permanent magnet. More specifically, this occurs due to Ampere's law which tells us that, when there is an electric current in a conductor, it generates a magnetic field in a circular shape around it. So by winding the wire in the form of a spiral or coil, the magnetic fields generated by each turn add up, generating a magnetic field with a greater strength, a result that is further enhanced by an iron core, which is capable of guiding the magnetic field inside. On the other hand, the moving armature is basically a lever made of an insulating material that also includes some material such as iron at one of its ends. Iron, being a ferromagnetic material, is attracted to nearby magnetic fields regardless of their polarity. Because of this, when the electromagnet is activated or deactivated the moving armature switches between two possible states. Finally, the contacts will be connected to the second circuit, and in this particular case they will be separated from each other as well, preventing the passage of current. Now, understanding all the components, we can see the relay in operation. When an electric current reaches the electromagnet, it will start to generate a magnetic field. In turn, the piece of iron in the moving armature will be attracted by this magnetic field, causing it to change position and push with its other end to one of the contacts until the two are joined, which would close the circuit and the motor would start to operate. The principle of its operation is quite simple and intuitive, but still there are dozens of variants of these components. So now we will see some of the most important ones. The first one is related to its operation as a switch. Although in the example we mentioned that it could close a circuit by applying a current, this is not the only option. In technical terms, the first example is known as a normally open switch but we could also have a normally closed variant. That is to say, when no current passes through the electromagnet, current passes through the second circuit, 
and when the electromagnet is activated, it separates the contacts and prevents the passage of current. This difference may seem a minor detail, but for certain cases its choice has a great relevance. Suppose we want to use a normally closed relay on our conveyor belt. We could change the programming of the controller circuit so that it sends an electric current when the belt has to stop. However, if for some reason the battery in the controller circuit runs out, one of its components fails, or we simply want to make some change to it, and therefore it is unable to send current to the electromagnet, then the motor would run without stopping until we solve the problem. In addition to this, in other contexts, the choice between a normally open or normally closed relay can have energy implications. For example, if we want to control a lamp that we want to keep on for 20 hours and off for 4 hours, then it would be better to use a normally closed relay, as we would only need to keep the relay energized for 4 hours, as opposed to a normally open relay, which would need to be energized for 20 hours. These two types of relays are known as single pole and single throw, where the number of poles refers to the number of different circuits or paths that a single switch can control, and the number of throws refers to how many different contacts or output connections can be connected to the switch. Just so you don't get confused, we will now look at this with some examples. If we convert our single throw relay into a double throw relay, we will now have three connectors on the side of the circuit being controlled. By analyzing its operation we will realize that it is basically a fusion of the two previous examples. Each time the electromagnet changes state and moves the moving armature, all it will do is open the circuit that was closed and close the circuit that was open. In other words, in the same relay we will have a connector that behaves as normally open and another that behaves as normally closed, making it more versatile for different applications. On the other hand, if we switch from a single pole relay to a double pole relay it would be equivalent to having two equal relays being activated simultaneously by the same input signal on the electromagnet, resulting in something like this. In this case it would be a double pole double throw relay. Here the possible applications might not be so obvious, but an example would be to allow changing the direction of rotation of the motor. Suppose that this time the motor runs on direct current and therefore the direction of rotation depends directly on the polarity of the wires to which it is connected. In this case, we can connect each of the motor terminals to two of the relay terminals, one to the normally closed connector of the first pole and the other to the normally open connector of the other pole. In this way, each time the relay changes state, it will invert the polarity of the current passing through the motor, and in turn reverse the direction of rotation. Clearly, in this case we would not have the option of stopping the motor if we wanted to, but we can easily solve it by using a second single throw single pole relay as we had done initially. As we could see, a relay is a simple but at the same time quite versatile component, that depending on its internal structure and the connections we make, allows us to control electrical machines in different ways. Now going back a bit, if we focus on its limitations, Although relays can separate circuits of different voltages and amperages, they will not necessarily withstand all possible configurations. If the voltage with which it works is too high, it could ionize the air and electrically connect components that are not physically touching. More specifically, when the contacts are too close together, this can generate an electric arc which causes a considerable increase in temperature at that location, resulting in a hazard to the circuit and its surroundings. Furthermore, since the operation of an electromagnetic relay depends on the movement of some parts with elastic properties, the contact is not instantly perfect. By analyzing what happens in slow motion we will realize that, when changing the state of the relay, the connectors will be connected and disconnected several times before reaching a stable position, generating what is known as the rebound effect. Although in the case of controlling a motor this is not a major problem, it might affect the operation of other components, such as digital circuits that work at frequencies higher than the rebound effect. For both cases, since the problem is directly related to the relay contacts which must physically move to open or close the circuit, the easiest solution would be to use solid-state relays, which have no moving parts, and therefore do not suffer from electric arc or the rebound effect. However, if we want to continue using electromagnetic relays, we also have some alternatives. For example, to integrate what is known as an RC circuit, which, as its name suggests, has a capacitor. As we saw in a previous video, 
This is a component that when connected to a current source is electrically charged, and then, when disconnected, can release those same charges in a controlled manner. Because of this quality, it can be used in two ways. First, to divert the current and make it start to charge the capacitor instead of arcing, and second, to stabilize the current coming from the relay. In addition, for the particular case of the rebound effect we can also use a SR latch, a circuit that as we saw in a previous video is able to switch between two stable states to receive a signal at one of its terminals. I hope you liked this video, remember to subscribe and that you can also support me on Patreon if you think what I do is worth it. That's all for now and see you in the next video.